G'day guys, it's Prof from TAT. Today we've got a 2007 Mini Cooper S uh, that's in for running rough. Stick with us and I'll show you what we found. Okay, so this is the Mini here. As you see, check engine light is on. Uh, we start playing around with it and um, we can barely get it started. It's got a funny rattle noise on startup. It sounds quite poor. So um, we got it into the shop, got a code scan done, and I'll just fast forward that a little bit, but um, uh, we had a few codes in the system for uh, mixture adaptation and a couple of ignition call issues. So obviously this car didn't feel like it really had a misfire, it felt like something was really off, you know, a bit of backfiring, a um, bit of running rough, and we thought to ourselves, uh, possibly a timing issue, maybe maybe uh, exhaust back pressure from um, you know ignition misfires, uh, killing the cat. So we decided super easy to get to the spark plugs. So let's just pull a spark plug out, put it in on the pressure transducer in it, and we can look at exhaust back pressure and timing at the same time. So for those of you that uh, know what you're looking at here, this is a known good to compare, and we're looking at where the exhaust opens at 154 degrees, where the exhaust valve opens. Looking at a four-stroke cycle here. If we go to our capture, you can see here that it opens at 101 degrees. How early? That's that's basically 50 degrees advanced, and you can see that it opens so early. So even if you look where our intake valve opens here, you can also see this is advanced at 329 degrees and when, when we go to our known good you can see that it's roughly around the 370 degrees so clearly there's a an issue with the timing on this vehicle we suspect with the rattly noise that maybe the tensioner has failed and the chains jumped a couple of teeth the customer unfortunately decided that they didn't want to spend any money on the vehicle so we didn't get a chance to pull it down and prove it as you can see this is this is a great test to have so there you go guys, hopefully that makes sense to you and just another a great example of where an in-cylinder pressure transducer can come in handy to diagnose a fault. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.